Hey guys, welcome. My name is Mr. Stoker and welcome to the uh, first episode of Stoked About Science. Here, This is my monthly uh, science video. Uh, if you have done one of my science camps before, then it's welcome back. And uh, glad that you've uh, wanted some more stuff to do. And uh, this is my first shot at this, so hopefully uh, it goes well. If you're new, um, then welcome. I love teaching uh, science and physics in particular, um, and I love making it so that anyone can understand it, and more importantly, that anyone can do it. And uh, hopefully you'll get to do some cool things today. So I want to talk about sound. And sound is created uh, whenever anything vibrates. And I've got this um, rod right here. OK, I'm going to drop this. It's going to be loud, so prepare yourself. See, I told you it was loud, right? The reason why you heard that sound the way it, was, it sounded was because this thing was vibrating. And as it was vibrating, it was slamming into air molecules next to it. And they were vibrating, slamming into the ones next to them. And pretty soon that hit your eardrum and slammed into your eardrum. And your ear then detected that uh, as a sound. And it's really cool the way that works. Um, and any kind of a sound is created by something vibrating. Let me put this back over here. And how fast or slow it vibrates, or you can think of it as shaking if you want, determines how high or, no, the, the, high or low the note is that you hear. Take, for example, uh, this tuning fork right here. If I hit this, bring it close to the mic here, you can hear that's a certain pitch. If I take one that is longer, like this one, you can probably guess that because it's longer, it's going to be tougher to get it to shake back and forth. So if it shakes back and forth more slowly, then you'll get a lower note. And I have a way of testing notes. I'm using, a, or testing frequencies. I'm using a free app here that's called Feedback Detector. I don't know how well you can see that there, or if it's in focus or not. But Feedback Detector is this free app on uh, Apple. Um, so this is an iPod, or you can use it on iPhone. Um, so I guess I'm doing an advertisement for them. But uh, it works pretty good. And I'll show you, um, I don't know how well you can see it there, but. So it's coming up with a certain frequency. And if I quit talking, you can see that it's 514. Stamped on this, it says it's 512. So it's coming in within a couple of uh, hertz are the units for sound. This bigger one I used to begin with here. Two eighty two or so, and it's stamped on it is two eighty eight so it's not exact, but it gets you close so that's kind of a, a cool app. Another one that I like uh, on Android is called um, sp let's see spectrum analysis monitor and it's also free and it works uh, pretty well too there's others out there, but I like free stuff, and uh, these both were simple to use, and I liked them so the uh, frequency is what this is called is how many vibrations it's, it's doing per second. Let me just show you what I mean here. If something like this tuning fork is vibrating, so it's hitting air molecules next to it. And I've already kind of talked to you about this, but I think it's helpful to see it. And then those are bumping into the next ones next to them. And those bump into the ones next to them. And pretty soon that hits your ear. And you've got this eardrum, which is just a membrane inside the ear that vibrates a lot like a drum. And what's cool is the frequency, or how often these vibrate here, determines how these vibrate. And that's transmitted by domino effect all the way to your ear. And that your eardrum vibrates with that exact same frequency, it's called. So frequency is how many uh, vibrations are happening per second. And that's measured in hertz. And usually, for Hertz, they write capital H uh, and Z. So when you read something as so many Hertz, that just means so many vibrations a second. OK, I want to show you that sometimes um, you know, the vibration isn't all that loud, like these tuning forks that you already saw. Let me grab a different one, actually. How about this one? Not super loud, but notice what happens if I put it against something that's bigger.
gets a lot louder because the bigger object starts vibrating the same way and then it touches a lot more air molecules so a lot more air starts moving and so that's a louder sound to you. This box right here is designed to vibrate with the same frequency as this tuning fork which is supposed to be middle C, 256 hertz. And you can hear that's a lot louder. So most musical instruments have some kind of way to amplify them, some sort of sound box like this that also vibrates, like guitar body or the back, um, I guess, wall of a piano, the board there. I want to show you um, a couple other things, but first I want to tell you uh, most people can hear frequencies as low as about 20 vibrations per second, which is 20 hertz, um, all the way up to 20,000 vibrations per second, uh, which is 20,000 20, hertz. And um, if you're like a dog or Superman, you can hear stuff above this. Now what's interesting is a lot of times as people get older and um, they start to age, they l start losing the higher frequencies and they can't hear them anymore. So there's several like ringtones uh, that you can get on your phone that are called like mosquito or ultrasonic or something like that where supposedly they're in this higher end frequency and sometimes parents can't hear them ringing but like kids can. So you might test that out with different phone rings and see if you can come up with any of those. Uh, there's another idea that I want to go through with you real quick here and that's the idea of resonance. Whenever you make something vibrate the way it naturally wants to, uh, it's called resonance. And I have here a little example. Sorry to go off screen there for a second, but um, think about swinging in a swing. So this is my demonstration of you swinging in a playground swing, right? This is you. Does it look like you? I hope so, or I hope not. So you're swinging a little bit, right? Swinging like that, and if somebody pushes you with just the right timing, they don't even have to push very hard, but you start to go higher and higher. Just a little push at the right time, you go higher and higher. That idea of making something, in this case swing, or vibrate the way it naturally wants to, is called resonance. If the timing is wrong, notice what happens. I stop it really quick. So resonance, the t it's all about timing, making something vibrate the way it naturally wants to. So um, that's what this box uh, does. This box is made to vibrate a certain way, and so the tuning fork makes it do that, and it gets really loud. I have something else, though, I can do here. Um, that's a wine glass. In fact, I have several of these right here. And I meant to unpack these, and I forgot. Let me do it real quick. There's one. Another. Here's my last one. We were using these last night at a demo show we were doing in an elementary school. So if I put a little bit of water in these, um, then I can make them vibrate the way they naturally want to. And the way I do that is I get my finger a little bit wet. You've probably seen this before. And I want to make it so my finger slips and sticks around the outside edge. So I'm just t touching the edge. So I'm kind of slipping and sticking, and it's making this annoying kind of squeak. Once I get it that way, then I lighten up just a little bit, and I get it to sing. I can do this one as well. This one is harder to do. There we go, I got it. This one right here, I've never been able to get it. It's like too high pitch, or I just, it's tricky, it's really narrow. So not every wine glass, um, thin stem glass like this works, you know, but three out of the four work. Now I didn't spend a lot of money, they're not like fancy ones, they're just like from thrift stores or, or from Walmart. So if you have something that's thin stemmed like this, you can try it because it needs to be able to like vibrate up there on the top. Um, so that's resonance and it's really cool to be able to do and sometimes uh, you can experiment with putting different amounts of water in them. I mean, not sometimes, you can do that all the time. And you can use uh, one of these free apps to then figure out what the frequency is. And if you add a little bit of water, how does that change the frequency? So that could be kind of a lab that you do at home. How much water, when you add it, like tablespoon, or quarter cup, or whatever, how much does that change the frequency for different wine glasses? Okay, there's something else um, that I wanted to show you here. And uh, that is one of my favorite demonstrations. And I'll end with this. 
is uh, this rod right here. I forgot one more thing I need. Luckily, though, I have a wireless mic, so I can walk wherever I want. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I'm going to put violin rods in here uh, on the bottom of this aluminum rod. This aluminum rod isn't anything special. I don't know if you can see this, but it used to go right here in this room, and it was just a rod made to hold up some things. I'm going to put this uh, rosin on this, which is pretty much tree sap. And my fingers are going to stick and slip, just like the wine glass did here. I'm going to try to hold it in the middle. And you have to squeeze it and apply the right amount of pressure. There we go. Wow. You hear how loud that is? Just an aluminum rod. It's really loud. Listen to this on the board. Sounds like a laser cut or something, doesn't it? So this is cool. You can make things resonate besides just uh, glasses like this. Well, thanks for watching. That's the end of the demos. I'll have some more stuff for you here in a minute.